Hello friends, in this lecture, we will continue with three-point bending test. So in the previous lecture, we had assigned the load and boundary condition for the three-point bending test. Now I'm going to open up the project. So go to file and open. You can continue from the previous lecture by opening this file that is three-point bending test 2 and click open. So here we can see it is showing a check on engineering data and geometry. So I will go to model and then edit. So till now we can see we have defined the displacement on all these sides and then we have defined the contact between them. So now we are going to mesh this object. So I will go to mesh, right click and then generate the mesh. After that we can see a default mesh has been generated but right now we can see the mesh is not of a good quality. So what I do I will reduce the sizing. So I will go to mesh right click and then I will go to sizing and here I will select all the objects. So let's say I click on this body and then select all the objects and then click on apply. Here in the element size Right now by default it is close to 10. So what I do I will let's say I will select 3 and then mesh this. So click on generate mesh. So if I zoom in here we can see this time the mesh is of a better quality. After that what I do I will go to this analysis settings. So here we need to define the nonlinearity inside this analysis. As we know, we are going to perform this analysis in two steps. In the first step, this body is going down. In the second step, it is going up. So here, we need to define number of steps too. So insert value 2 here. Now define the property for the current step. So current step is 1. Step and time. It means the step number 1 will end at 1 second. So we can define any value here and we are taking let's say 1 second is the end time. And then we need to define auto time stepping. So time stepping means in how many steps the load is going to increase. As we had already discussed in the nonlinear analysis, the load is applied gradually. So we need to define the time steps. So here what I do, I will go to this on. Now inside this, we have two options. Either we can specify this in number of steps or we can specify a time step. So let's say I want to specify in sub steps. So sub steps means we can specify a general value of sub steps. Let's say I want to break this problem into, into 50 steps. Okay, 50 and then minimum step. Minimum step means when the solution is going to converge very good. It will solve the problem in less than 50 steps. So here we need to specify what is the minimum step for this. So let's say minimum step is 10. For all these parameters, the number are not a definite value. So you can play around with these value. We can change increase or decrease according to the requirement. And maximum number of steps. Maximum means when the solution is not converging, how many number of steps the software can take. Let's say this is 100. If the steps go beyond this 100 number of steps, the solution is going to fail. So these are some general parameters we can define. So you can play around this value. You can also change these par parameters. There is no fixed formula to define them. This value generally inserted depending on the experience of the engineer who is going to perform this analysis. Similarly, I will go to step number two. Enter this. So the step number two is going to end at two second. And here we are not going to define any auto time stepping because in this step no load is applying. The body is going to reverse back to its original position. We can see here from this step to this step 
no load is applying here so the force is going to decrease after that i will go to solution right click and solve this and let's see if there is any error into this analysis now to check the error we can go to this solution and if it take and if it is taking longer time then there may be some problem due to the contacts so here we go to all the solutions so inside the solution information it is going to show all the solution and all the steps the software is going to take so here we can see it is performing like iteration number one two three four like this and now we can see it is showing some error go to this message and it is showing contact status has experienced an abrupt change and check result carefully for possible contact separation it means it means our contact parameters are not proper so we need to change the contact parameters so if i go to this here it is going to show an error if we go to this error here it is going to show preconditioned conjugate gradient gradient solver failed with an error code and the error is it is not able to solve this problem due to the contact so we can find the keyword that is error here so if we go to the error here we can see one error another error here is like this similarly we can also look for the warning so generally all these errors are coming due to the contact and in nonlinear analysis it is very common you will get errors in the analysis so what i can do is i will go to this contact once again let's go to connection and then contact here we can see we have three contact contact one contact two and contact three so i will go to contact number one and let's change some parameters here we have defined the pinball region so what i do in the pinball region i will select auto detection the software is automatically going to detect the pin ball region similarly in the interference treatment i will say adjust to touch similarly change these parameters also here let's say this is auto detect and then here adjust to touch similarly here and adjust to touch and once again I will perform the analysis so I will go to solution right click I will first I will go to this clear generated data it will delete all the previous generated result and then once again solve this right click and then solve this so again we can go to the solution and then we can check the solution file So this analysis may take some time to complete the simulation and we can also see the convergence here. I will go to this solver output. I will go to force convergence. Let's see how the force is converging. So here we can see into this graph the force is converging like this. Similarly also in the time. So this is time with respect to number of iterations. Also, we can check for the displacement convergence, how the displacement is going to converge. Okay, so now we can see the solution has been completed. I will go to solution. Okay, so here I will go to this solver output and we can see this time the analysis has been completed without any error. So here I will go to this total deformation and we can see how the board is going to deform. So I will go to this animation first. Let's go to the animation here and we can see how it is going to animate. So when the body will return back to its original position, there will not be any proper contact. But we can see when the body is going down, the contacts are proper. Okay, so I will go to this equivalent stresses. And here we can see the maximum value of stress is 242. So in this way we can perform 
the three point bending test